Hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you. Ah, it's nice to be with you this morning. Or it's morning my time. I don't know where it is. It's great to see some uh, familiar faces and some familiar names. Uh, for those of you who, uh, just to make sure that uh, we're on the same page, my name is Larry Wells. I'm founder of Future Life Now. I'm the one that's going to be in the next few days of starting January 13, 18, and 20, uh, leading a three uh, session series on retrain the brain for success, how to become a better uh, explorer, guide, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and guardian angel, we, can, we tend to call it uh, sometimes. Um, and uh, I am here this morning uh, because uh, as the beginning of the new year, you know, 2021 was an exceedingly stressful years, year for most of us. And uh, I, I want to offer this morning uh, a guided imagery or a guided meditation to help us prepare for a better, more successful, more, what I want to say, not just successful, but more rewarding, comforting, confident 2022. And, uh, and here's a secret. I don't have any secrets. <laughs> what? What will lead you into a successful 2022 is not somebody like me, but it is somebody perhaps like me can help you find the resources within yourself and within your own, sometimes we use the word subconscious, sometimes we word do use the word spirit. Uh, at any rate, the quality of life that you experience really does come from in you. When I work with clients, I do not enter into a, uh, an attitude of knowing, thinking that I have the answers to your problems. My real Confident, absolute belief is that I can ask the questions, connect with your inner spirit, your subconscious, and allow that spirit, that unconscious, to provide the absolutely perfect solution for you. Now, I could tell you my solution. And that would work absolutely perfect if you happen to be me. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> You're not. And I'm not you. So, so as we begin, let me invite you to just uh, become as comfortable as you can be where you are. You can lie down or you can sit. Uh, Probably standing is not the, not the most useful uh, position for you. And uh, let me invite you just for the next few minutes to let the things that have been on your mind just momentarily for the next few minutes to simply slide away and and if you use your imagination, you can imagine taking those issues that, with which you've been dealing. And for this moment, I would like for you to take them and put them in a box, the box of your imagination, and close it. Put it someplace safe where you can get to it at any time you want to, but it's not going to interrupt the next few moments. Now, I'd like for you to begin 
by just noticing what kind of bodily sensations you're experiencing at this moment. For example, what's, what do you experience in terms of your relationship with whatever it is that's supporting you, whether it's a bed, a chair, floor, a mat? What are you experiencing? Where, where do you feel the support? Where do you not feel the support, the support that's just sort of non-sensational at all at this particular moment? Begin to notice where in your own body do you feel most comfortable? Where are the the pleasure points, the points that give you support or confidence knowing that you're okay. Do a, a, a quick, well, take as much time as you need, but begin to do a body scan and begin to notice, begin to notice any places that you're experiencing or holding tension. Now there's something that I should have said earlier and I will say now, I want you to be sure that you're close enough to the volume so that you do not, do not have to strain to hear my voice because this is all about unstraining, not straining. So I don't want you to have to work at hearing me. Taking some time to notice where there is, might be any kind of tension. Now it's interesting about how we interact with the world and the circumstances in which we find ourselves. We sometimes hold uh, our experiences and especially our most difficult experiences in some part of our body, where is it that you might hold tension? And I'd like for you to imagine that that tension has a particular color and that it has a particular density. It's the color that's appropriate for you and it's the density that's appropriate for you. And now I'd like for you to begin to imagine that it easily, softly, and taking as much time as it needs to simply drain away. Sometimes people imagine that tension draining out the, their fingertips or out the tips of their toes onto the floor. Or maybe it, maybe it drains away in another way that's most appropriate for you, that's most useful for you. And now I'm wondering as you're becoming more and more aware of the sensations that you experience in your body and even in your own mind and imagination. For example, 
As you think about your hands, does one feel different from the other? Perhaps one is colder or warmer. One is more relaxed, or maybe even one might be lighter than the others. And I've had people experimenting with this, discovering that one hand is lighter than the other, and so much so that it begins to simply want to lift itself from wherever it is. Now, not everyone does that, and it's not a requirement, but just notice if one hand is so much lighter than the other, that it begins or has a tendency to begin to float up all by itself with no intention, no effort. And now that you're at least aware of these various sensations in your body, I want to invite you to go in your mind's eye to a place that you know is exceedingly safe and comfortable a place where no one or nothing will interrupt or interfere and it may be a place from your history some place that you in a younger you felt really really safe and protected or it may be a place that you've often imagined and longed to be in this place that is so comfortable and safe, where you will not be disturbed, where nothing is pressing in on you. You are absolutely comfortable feeling all the ease that you can possibly feel. Notice the things you see there. What colors, what shapes are in that place. And begin to feel what's the texture of being there. Does it feel smooth? Or does it feel as if there is some texture to it that's special, that's exceedingly comforting, that lets you know that you're present and you're safe? Or does it just feel smooth? Or perhaps some other texture besides smooth? Just notice, it's your place. It's a place for you to be comforted. What's the fragrance? Is there a smell, a fragrance to that place? We often don't pay much attention to the fragrances. But most of the places we go to have its own sort of fragrance. A friend of mine often goes in his mind eyes to his grandmother's kitchen where he smells freshly break, freshly baked bread but that's his experience what's yours what's the fragrance that you smell is the wind or the air still or is it moving is it warm or cool and i'm wondering does that place have specific sounds? 
sounds that can bring comfort and peace. And as you're in that sacred, safe, personal, comforting space, just become more and more aware of what it's like to be there. And it's important that you know that you are completely aware that this is a place to which you can come at any time you need to come. And now I want you to become aware of something that's a bit surprising, perhaps something that you've never experienced before, but all of a sudden, whether it's a vision, a screen, like a television or a theater screen that you, that you somehow step into, but all of a sudden, in this comfort of this place, you find yourself in the middle of time. Imagine that. What's it like to be in the middle of time? Have you ever been there before? In the middle of time? And, and, and what does that mean? I mean, it, and for some, it will mean that if you were to turn around and look behind you, you would see a map of your past. And on that map, there are some bright spots and there are some dark spots. The bright spots are those that were of great enjoyment, great peace, great accomplishment. What I, I, you know, I don't know what those bright spots are for you, but your unconscious mind will remind you of some of those bright spots. What's the brightest spot? What's the, what's the most bright spot in your past? that brings to you the kind of comfort and joy and peace and hope and whatever. There are some dark spots, some things that represent something different, but we're not so interested in those except for this. Notice how many dark spots there are and some are much darker than others. And recognize this true, absolutely true fact. You survived every one of them. And you can know that you survived them because you are here in the middle of time. You have made it this far. And I want you to notice also that to the left or to the right are perhaps other people's experiences of being in the middle of the time, but they do not concern you. And now I invite you in your mind's eye to turn around and look ahead into the future. And in the future, you will also see some bright spots and some darker spots.
And there is this genuine sense of knowing that just like from your past, any dark spots that lie in your future, you will survive. because you've survived so much in the past and you have always made it through. Perhaps not always the way you would have liked to, but you have survived. But I want you to focus now on the number of bright spots that you recognize in your future. And notice there are a multitude of them. There are a multitude of possibilities. What's the possibilities that lie in front of you? Let me invite you to take a few moments now to notice in the future that bright spot. There's one bright spot bright spot that might stand out among the others i don't know what that is but i invite your spirit your unconscious to begin to reveal to you about the possibilities of something absolutely terrific fantastic and it has to do with why you're here. It relates to why you live the life you live, why you walk the path you walk, why the world needs you. Now, that may be a strange thought for some of you. But the truth is that the world needs you. And as you look at that bright spot, it may be the contents of that bright spot might be just a little blurry, but you can have a sense about the possibilities that fulfills you. that makes perhaps the dark spots worth it all to experience the light spots, the bright spots. And I'm gonna invite you to take all the time you need to explore that particular bright spot and any other bright spot. And simply notice that as you breathe the way you normally breathe, that you can have experiences of possibility, the experience of hope, and that's not the word hope like I hope so. But it is the word of hope that means I can face it with confident expectation of something in the future and not too distant future. to make it all worthwhile. That you began to discover even more completely and fully that you are needed and capable of living in 
and bringing to others perhaps a life of what love joy peace any of those things taking all the time that you need And when it's the right time, the appropriate time for you, I invite you to come back to the room in which you're currently in, but only when it's the right time. And to come back to this time, you've been in the middle of time. When it's appropriate, I invite you to come back to this time. And when it's appropriate to you and for you, let me know by simply raising a hand and letting me know. We're here. Okay, I'm seeing some hands raising. Some will come. Ah, some people have raised their hands electronically. I love that. <laughs> now, I want you to know that, uh, that I am an electronic or a technological genius. I know how to turn on a flashlight, <laughs> but I'm not much beyond that. So I'm interested in... in uh, if you would like to say something about what you just experienced, or if you have some questions about that, uh, to I see all of these uh, electronically raised hands. If you would unmute yourself, and uh, and uh, okay, so I think I see Jane. Jane, are you asking to say something? Can you un unmute yourself? I may, I may have to get my technologist to, to help with that. Uh, that would be uh, none other than uh, Cynthia. <laughs> there, there you go, Jane. Oh, no, I see your hand raised. Let me see what I can do here. Oh, it worked. There you go. Something worked. Hi. There are two Janes, but I will speak quickly and say, Larry, that was lovely. Thank oh, you. Oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And let's see, Cynthia, I do need your help because all of a sudden, everything disappeared from my screen. Hang on. Larry, um, yes. I've asked Sandy to unmute. Hang on. Cynthia. Hey, this is Sandy. I just want to let you know that that was a really amazing um, experience for me and wanted to thank you so much. Yeah. Hang on. I'm sorry, I can't see anything. Okay, I'm back. Oh, hi, Larry. I, I don't know if you heard me. I just wanted to thank you so much 
for bringing us to that space. Um, it was a really amazing experience. I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate your being with us and I'm hoping that it's useful. My understanding is that I, you know, this has been recorded and it will become available for people to, uh, to access it in the future. So thank you. I'm, gl I'm glad it was useful for you. Anyone else? Hi, Nancy. Unmute yourself, please. Okay, look at this. If you could just. Uh... <laughs> so let me say this to uh, there we go. Penelope. Uh, I'd okay. raise my hand if I knew how. I'll see if I can find you, Penelope. And hey, uh, all you need to do is unclick yourself. Now, Nancy, you were about to speak. Yeah, I'm unmuted now. Uh, that was uh, magnificently freeing, Larry. Thank you so much. I am so uh, thrilled and honored to be uh, part of this experience. Uh, well, it's so nice to have you with us. Thank you. I'm glad this was useful for you. I, I wish you the very best. I really do. Thank you, Larry. You as well. Larry? Larry? Yes. Can you just open your participant list and then look at the top and you can see the hands that are raised? Okay, I'm going to ask Terry to unmute herself. Okay, just a minute. Let me check. I'm. Uh, do, 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 do. So I'm, I'm, let me read. You, can you see the chat room, chat stuff here? Uh, do, 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 do. No, I'm not asking you to look at chat. I'm asking you to look at participants. And at the top, at the participants at the top of the list, you'll see people who have raised their hands. So um, let's see. It looks like Judy is ready to talk. Have you already talked, Judy? I think maybe you have. Thank you, uh, Cynthia, because my volume is not very well here right now. Okay. Uh, Gabby, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, Gabby. Okay, how about uh, Addie? Hope I said that right, Addie. No? Okay. They might have just raised their hands because they loved loved the just loved it in general. Wanted you to know. I believe there was a question, Larry, in the comments that I wanted to find. I'm looking at the comments now. There was a question I must have missed. Oh, wow, it's way up here. Okay. Okay, so one of them from Melinda says climate disasters are a dark spot in all our futures that we might not survive. I wonder if you could address the climate anxiety. Well, you know, as a as a as a person who uh, let me just say this that all of us have been raised in a specific climate that doesn't necessarily refer to weather. Some of us have, have survived difficult childhood climates. Some of us have survived difficult financial climates or um, any number or health climates, and we have survived the thing that helps us to survive is the possibility of a future. And can I tell you a word that says, whatever the climate circumstances are, whether it's weather, like, you know, the greenhouse and experience and all of that, or the political climate, which is, in some ways and for some people as difficult and as threatening as any other climate that we could be living in. Some of us are in health climates that create problems. 
that make our future questionable? The only word I have to say about that has to do more with at the level of some kind of spirituality. And that is that because of who we are spiritually, we will make the best of what can happen. And the thing that I, that I hope, I, I think right now, I, this may not fit into anybody's uh, model of the world but mine, but years ago, I read a book and then I saw a movie called The Hiding Place. And it was a story of, of the Ten Boom family, in particular, Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy, that were uh, imprisoned in a, a Nazi uh, concentration camp. And it was most horrible. People were dying and being tortured and uh, I don't need to tell you the story of that. But Corrie ten Boom in her book, The Hiding Place, reiterated what Viktor Frankl had, had said in his book, um, A Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, he too was in a concentration camp. And it was the people who had hope that is that confident expectation that were not, they were tortured, but not terrorized. Does that make sense? Can you make the distinction between those two words? They were tortured, but not terrorized. My quality of life is shaped in large part by my ability to have a confident expectation that whatever comes my way, I will be provided with the internal resources necessary to make it through. And it may eventually, you know, I have a suspicion. It's a pretty strong suspicion that a hundred years from now, I won't be sitting in front of a television screen. It's a suspicion. But I'm going to stay here as long as I can. And you know, I can't, I can't provide you, I can't promise you, you know, ice cream and cake for the rest of your life. But I can tell you that you have within you all the resources that you need to be able to have the best quality of life that you can, no matter of what the circumstances. Yeah, I mean, I have deep concerns about the political climate of our, our nation. I have deep concerns about the, you know, the, the ecological situation of our world. Those are, I have deep concerns about the situation of many of my neighbors and friends and the people with whom I deal. Here's a secret. I also had some concerns for myself in those areas once in a while. <laughs> but I also have that confidence that I have whatever internal resources I need, that they are available to me Sometimes I have to get somebody to help me find them. 
and and that's what I do in my NLP practice is everybody that comes to me, I believe, I am absolutely confident that they have within themselves all the resources that they need to, to make the kind of changes and to have the kind of life that they want. My job is not to tell them what to do. My job is to help them discover what they need to do. It's not me. I don't have the answer to your issues, but I know you do, and I help you discover them. That's what it is. And that's what Cynthia does in a different way in terms of the physicality, that she knows that, she, you know, she doesn't fix people. She helps people find the resources within themselves to get the best quality of life that's available. So I hope that's, you know, that's kind of a long-winded answer to a, a question, but it's not a simple question. And this, I, I can tell you this, I can absolutely positively tell you this, that the solution to my problem does not involve changing you. The solution to my problems does not involve changing my wife, my boss, my children, my, you know, my grocer or whatever. That's not the solution. The solution is how do I respond to where I find myself in this world? How do I respond to you know, all the conditions that I, that I exist in? My children, all of whom are grown, uh, and most all of my grandchildren are grown. I have a four-year-old grandson a great grandson, I mean, and all of them have some level of difficulties. In general, they have good lives, but they have some difficult. And, and my job's not to change them. My my job's not to to tell them what they should do, because I don't have the answers to their problems. But I do have the the ability to ask the questions so that they can find their own solution. So instead of saying, God, I lived in a world that is terrorized by COVID. The question I have to ask myself, okay, so how is it? How is it that I uh, respond? And how is it that I but my issue is not just how do I keep myself, how do I, how do I prevent myself from being a threat to somebody else? That's as big a question as how do I stay alive? How do I keep my neighbor alive? Anyway, as you can tell, I used to be a preacher, so, so, so thus ended the sermon. <laughs> All right. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so I see Cynthia talking to everybody. I want to see what else is next. Uh, yes, yeah, I get all of these information, these questions. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you appreciated what I did. Um, and uh, all I can do is say that it came from within me. This was not something that I had written out beforehand. Uh, it was the fact that I can, I can trust my inner guide, my inner spirit uh, to lead me uh, at the appropriate time in the appropriate ways. And I simply want to say, I believe that is true for you. I think it is true for all of us. If we simply acknowledge the fact that there is within us 
that spirit, that unconscious, if you want to call it that, we do that in the, in the psychological realm, the spiritual realm. Now, I want you to understand that when I talk about spirit, I am not talking about some religion. I am talking about the spirit that gives life to each of us, that is a part of the creative process for the whole universe. So I'm not, I'm, uh, I happen to practice a particular religion, but that's not where, that's not where my life comes. My life comes from that inner spirit, that guide that is unique, uniquely mine. And it is the guide that is uniquely yours that took you to the middle of time that has a vision and a comprehension of those light spots and dark spots in the past and the knowledge and the comprehension of the bright spots and the not so bright spots for the days that lie ahead. And each, in each case, spirit says, you survived in a particular way that was appropriate for you, and you will survive in the particular way that is appropriate for you in the future to whatever comes up. So live your life free from fear and meet. Oh, I don't want to start another sermon, but I want to say meet with that spirit that gives you life on a regular basis, some kind of spiritual discipline. Well, that's meditation. You know, there, if you look up on the internet about spiritual disciplines or spiritual practices, you'll get a list of about the one I saw was, or the ones that I've seen, something like 21 ways. My spiritual practice happens to be journaling. Started out many, many years ago, like in the mid uh, 70s, maybe. Started out journaling for 10 or 15 minutes every morning early. Now, you know, I almost have to set an alarm because I'm journaling for two hours and don't want to quit. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, when you got a family, you got stuff to do. <laughs> you know, so, but whether it's that or some kind of meditation, whether it's reading inspirational materials, the important thing is to attune to your spirit. You know, I'm going to be leading this, these three day uh, or three session things in January 13 and uh, 18 and 20. And they are simply uh, some, some pointers to the ways in which we can, can become better explorers. That is finding our way through life guides guiding others through life and becoming map makers, we call it. I, I sometimes I sometimes call it that that guardian angel, but it is a, the map maker creating a better map, a more useful map of my world of reality. And uh, they're just they're going to be introductory uh, things. They're free. Uh, you can sign up for them. On, a, on a support uh, future li at futurelifenow.com. And, uh, and it probably will be attached to uh, the follow ups to this session. Well, I have only exceeded my 30 minutes by 20. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, unless there are other questions, other comments. Uh, that's, a, that's a great place to wrap up, Larry. That's great. I'm sorry, say it again. That's a great place to wrap up. Okay. Yeah. yeah.
Now, my executive, I just say the executive director of the, <laughs> it's a great, and it's, it's so good to see some of you that I've, that I've seen before and been with, and it is exceedingly, uh, uh, I'm exceedingly happy to see some new faces. I wish you well, uh, dream your future, and uh, we will talk to you. We will see you at some time later. Thank you. Bye-bye.